Row crop farmers, farmland owners, and beginning farmers are increasingly curious about soil health. Integrating grazing ruminants ramps up soil health, and the feed value of cover crops can often offset the added cost of planting them. Livestock can also utilize a small grain in rotation or perennials planted on more marginal row crop fields. This video is one in a series through the Minnesota Institute for Sustainable Agriculture's Endowed Chair in Agricultural Systems. Luke Peterson and Carmen Fernholz discuss cattle and the operation of A-Frame Farm in the La Caparo River watershed in west central Minnesota. Carmen and his wife Sally have operated this farm since 1972. They are transitioning this 350 tillable acre operation to a young couple described in the companion video, Experienced Farmers Help Young Farmers Luke and Allie Peterson Integrate Grazing Cattle into the A-Frame Farm. In this video, Carmen and Luke describe their organic cropping system, integrating grazing over time, the benefits from diverse crops, how non-cash benefits can make economic sense for a row crop farmer, and ways Kernza fits into their grazing operation. Uh, last year we planted soybeans here, and um, next spring the whole farm will be small grain. So we're going to calve the the cows out front here on about three, four acres. We'll plant rye here, and that'll grow next spring. They'll be close to home. Um, if I'm busy, Carmen will be able to watch them each day. And um, once they calve, and we get good growth on our permanent pasture, we'll move the cows and calves down to permanent pasture. And then this whole farm will be planted into small grains. Um, it's about 70 acres of farmland. And um, after we take the small grains off, we'll plant a uh, diverse mix of tillage, radish, turnips, and uh, peas and sunflowers, uh, just a variety of, of different grasses and legumes. And then when the cows come off a of permanent pasture next fall, uh, we should have a nice established cover crop here, and they'll be able to virtually free range on the whole farm since we um, have more than enough land to, to let them do that. And, um, that half of the farm following cover crop or following small grain next year we'll be planting that into pasture and it'll probably stay in pasture for about three to four years and then our goal is to move that to the other side of the farm um, once we're done with with that piece but while they're over there we plan on doing rotational grazing potentially well, we want to be able to uh, long range do a lot of this permanent fencing on all the acreage so that we do have all the liberties of moving these cattle wherever we want. And uh, one quick thing, part of the reason they're here is because we look at this up by the farm site as a great place to winter them. And uh, we've learned over the years talking to, uh, to uh, cattle people that cattle don't need to necessarily, in fact a lot of times don't even want to be inside, even during uh, less than desirable weather. But if they're sheltered, it seems to do, they seem to stay healthier as well. And so this is looking like the winter area each year. Why are you integrating cattle into your organic cropping system? Mostly it makes my operation more diverse. So we've always planted cover crops and we've really never been able to utilize them. So they've kind of been an expense. We've been able to benefit from them. But um, if we can have uh, cattle or cows go out and graze those cover crops um, then we can kind of turn that kind of into another enterprise that um, we can uh, make money off of and uh, thinking long term obviously and then um, another reason is fertility so long term our goal is to uh, use all of our own hay because alfalfa is a pretty um, a, a very important part of our rotation for weed management and um, to build up organic matter and uh, for for nutrients but um, to utilize that hay and move it around from one farm to the next um, like right now behind us we're bale grazing so um, we're just kind of right now we're just focusing on the hilltops we'll feed the cows out on top of the hilltops um, we're kind of moving nutrients back to the high ground 
and um, we don't have to move any manure come next spring. So we let the cows do that for us. What benefits do you expect to observe from grazing cattle in your fields? Um, I think we'll see more as time goes on, especially when we can get an established cover crop out here when it's, a, when it's planted into a small grain. And we even have plans of making that happen in our row crops. We've uh, invested into a cedar and then in a high boy where we're gonna spread cover crops. But as of now, the main uh, observation that I think is pretty cool is with bale grazing, how um, you know we're not so worried about the waste of the bale. Um, it creates a thick, nice mat and it's obviously, obviously full of fertility. And um, I've noticed, another thing I've noticed is how often the cattle are on the move. Um, they're always moving around the farm, uh, depending on wind direction or the temperature or whatever, but they're always on the move. So I think for them, they're, they're glad to have the space. Right, and I think uh, we're going to see this uh, in soil fertility and soil structure over time. Uh, we've noticed already just having alfalfa in our rotation up to this point a cash crop and what it does to soil, but once we do the, the uh, rotational grazing and moving the pastures around, I know we're going to see the same benefits that we've already seen utilizing alfalfas. Okay. Yep. So, uh, when those roots have been established for three years, that's when we really notice um, right. that things are going to change. So. How would you encourage a row crop farmer to think about integrating grazing cattle? I've always told the story about uh, myself farming and raising alfalfa without any cows and what the benefit was. Uh, I obviously wasn't making the, the income off of the alfalfa acres that I could make off of the corn and soybeans and, and the small grain. But the, what we call, and Luke and I have talked about this a lot, what we've called the non-cash benefits of alfalfa. And we talked about this long and, and seriously about why we're going to bring cattle on. And that was one of the big reasons. We're not looking to make, at least in the beginning, looking to make a lot of uh, revenue. But we know that the non-cash benefits that we will generate from these cattle will make them profitable, uh, even in the short term when we look at what it's going to do to the soil, enhancing our crop rotations, everything. So that, I always like to use that comparison. So when I talk to young, uh, anybody, I talk to them, don't worry about making uh, a fistful of money putting the cattle on. Think about the non-cash benefits that you can gain and you're going to be profitable in the long run. Has the organic premium afforded the financial capacity to integrate cattle? I wouldn't be doing a lot of the things that I'm doing without um, the premium that you get with organic. Um, adding the perennial pasture in 2021 um, by no means is going to um, be profitable. Um, I'm just thinking long term and I'm thinking that I need to start building a market for grass fed beef and that's going to take some time. More than likely I have to direct market it to be able to make that premium on beef. But um, without the, you know, the increase in price on my grains organically, probably wouldn't allow me to sp be able to spend my time and, and money on moving into having a grass-fed beef herd. How does the new crop Kernza develop with the assistance of the Forever Green Initiative fit into your plans for grazing? How does it fit, Luke? Uh, in the future, you know, depending on which farm is fenced in and where our rotation is at and where the cows are at, after harvest or, be, you know, early in the spring, we could potentially uh, graze the Kernza. And uh, another thing that's really nice about growing Kernza is that we can uh, harvest the straw after we harvest the grain if we need straw to overwinter the cattle for bedding. Um, and we can always take that manure pack and haul it back out into the field. But um, and with Kernza, uh, since it's a perennial, you know, one of the main things is that we can build fertility because in order, to, the best way to build fertility is by building organic matter. And the best way to build organic matter is by growing roots. And Kernza has very deep roots. 
so yeah, it fits well into in with the cattle. And then it's a it's a cover crop. I mean, you can look across the, the landscape when you drove out here today and saw 90% black soil. And like you said, you noticed the Kearns of Field down the road here one mile. And the reason is here, it's grass green this time of the year, serving as a cover crop and as a grazing potential. Uh, it just fits in. Mm -hmm.